All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, friendly reminder, you are meeting me in the media center on Monday morning. On Monday morning, I will bring my stapler. You will be stapling your essays, dropping them in a pile, and I will be telling you what essay you will be completing that night. Is everyone clear on that? Okay, so meet me in the media center. I'll have a sign on my door. I'm going to send out a tweet, okay? But you need to be there on time. So everyone should have this sheet of paper that I handed out to you. It says period three LEQs. Everyone has it? Okay. For homework, due Monday, you are completing using specific examples, analyze similarities and differences in the spread of Islam during period six, uh, period 600 C to 1450 in the spread of Christianity during earlier periods. So you are integrating two different <coughs> types of information here. Okay, so everyone's clear. That's for homework, yes? Turn it over. Go to cause and effect on the second page. Using specific examples, analyze the effects of long distance human migrations between 600 CE to 1450. So you're talking about human migrations, people leaving from one spot to another. Okay? I think this is the harder one. Can we agree? Think about it, brainstorm, really put the effort in. Okay, they have to be moving. It's typically, it's not inter, it's intra-regionally. No, it's inter-regionally, not intra. So they have to leave one region of the world to get to another one. Okay, it can be anyone you want. There's a bunch of them. When you start thinking in that context, brainstorm, it's going to take a little bit to come up with that one. The first one should be pretty easy. Is everyone clear on that? Okay, so those are your two long essays you are writing. Open up to your short essays. Your short essay packet. Yesterday, we completed the first one. You are completing for our homework this weekend the following three. My goal today is get through question two and three with you. Is that clear? So we'll plan it out with you. Worst case, you're just stringing it all together. Is that fair? So that's the end goal. If I don't finish, you're completing it for homework on top of your two LEQs, correct? So the goal is to move quick, yes? Perfect. Everyone should have out their essays on their desk, which are due right now. With that being said, put your essay and your prompt together and hand it to someone near you. Do that now. Put your essay and your prompt. Give it to someone near you. To the new person who just received the essay and the prompt, what you are going to do is put your name at the very bottom of the prompt. May I borrow? What you are doing is you're putting your name at the very bottom of the prompt so I know who's grading it. During this time period, someone help my girl Maylu out. Maylu needs a friend, someone help her out. Someone switch with her, who cares? You can scratch out your name and write a different name, it's fine. Where's the prompt? You should be passing the prompts with them, gentlemen. Okay, so Carlota needs one, yes? Guys, come on, this is not hard. Carlota needs one. Okay, so what you're going to do with that new essay you have in front of me, we're going to color block it, just like we did with the previous ones, remember? So, with your thesis, as you're reading the essay, you're going to underline the thesis in orange. Okay? You are going to highlight with yellow your three points that they are making in the essay. Okay? Keywords for historical thinking are highlighted, or whatever references the prompt are highlighted blue, and then contextualization is underlined in red. Do that now. I'm passing around a stapler. You're going to staple their essay and the prompt together with the prompt on top. Just do thesis. Don't do anything else. So, just do the thesis paragraph. So, you're going to staple their essays together with their prompt on top. David, are you okay over here? Yeah. Good little stress, man. Okay. Okay.
Remember, the faster you do this, the faster I move. Okay, so underline the thesis. Highlighting in yellow the three points that they're arguing. You're going to highlight the historical thinking or the key terms in their phrase. Then you're going to, uh, uh, with a red underline, put the contextualization, what's happening in the world. The faster you move, the less homework you have. There's just no way around it, ladies and gentlemen. You've got 30 seconds. Who here has a good one in front of them? Raina, let's hear it. It's a hard transition to your Mongol. Who is it? It's good. It's good. Technically, you would score, but can we agree it's a hard transition you have? You're going to want to ease in a little bit better. But yeah, it would score every single point. Nice job. But we got to work on that transition a little bit because it's like a, oh, crusades, everything's perfect. Then. Mongols! All right. Anyone else have a good one in front of them? No one else has a good one? Everyone else is crap? Perfect. Can't wait to lose a lot of points here. Callie! I just want the, uh, I want the whole first paragraph, which should be thesis and contextualization. The three things are the turning point in the politics and economics of the region. During this time, Genghis Khan, ruler of the Mongol Empire, established Mongol supremacy in Central Asia and its Mongol control in northern China and the east and Persia in the west, making the Mongol Empire the largest single man land. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a lot of Mongols. Contextualization is a sentence. And you never start with you never start with contextualization, correct? <coughs> yes. So whoever that person is. Okay. Guys, contextualization goes at the very end of your paragraph, correct? You're just talking about what's going on in the world. What? Um, are those three, like, the three reasons? Yep. No, your historical thing is just restating of the prompt. Your three points is your what three things you came up with that are proving your point correct. So... Whoever's essays that is, your contextualization is good. It, it, it's at the bottom of the paragraph. Right now, it sounds like you're writing an essay about the Mongols when you're writing an essay about the Crusades. Yes? Does that make sense? Do you hear what I'm telling? Okay. All right. Here we go. Reading. Paragraph two. Okay. Restating the prompt is going to be underlined green. The point which is the point from the thesis that they're now arguing is going to be highlighted in green. The explanation of that point, so if they're talking about how Islam is now a massive uh, economic power, like in Abby's essay, then you're going to underline in brown the fact that Islam has now become an economic power. Anytime they use specific evidence, it's going to be done in purple, and the synthesis is done in pink. Now, stop for two seconds, you're going to have time. Listen, if they don't have something from the first paragraph, you need to make a note of it, correct? And you're going to write it at the top margin of the page. You're missing, and you're going to write that there, yes? Okay. Go ahead.
So, if they don't have a synthesis, you need to write at the top, you don't have a synthesis. If they aren't providing an evidence, you need to write evidence. You've got one minute. You got 30 seconds. Guys, if you have the stapler, you need to staple them and pass it along. <coughs> right now. You're fine. Yes, it should be. Guys, they should have two pieces of evidence in every paragraph. If they do not have two pieces of evidence in every paragraph, you're making a note at the top saying you do not have two pieces of evidence. So, as soon as you finish the second paragraph, or you have your thesis in your first actual body paragraph, go to the second body paragraph and keep going until you finish. Same pattern, same prediction. It's a nice uh, crown you got there. Munson's prompt. Well, we have yours. Look at the prompt sheet you have. Look at both, all of you. All of you involved. Munson, do you have your prompt sheet? Who's grading K's essay? Okay, we well need his prompt, which we have right here. Can you hand that to Munson? Here's Munson's prompt. Zach, do you have Munson's prompt? What the hell did you do with it? Oh my god, I just can't. Gentlemen. I'm sure I remember you hitting me your essay, but I don't think Will you check, please? Okay, you should be moving to the next paragraph, ladies and gentlemen. You're sitting there doing nothing. You're doing it wrong. I don't have. You have one minute to finish. Are you good? You're good. You've got 30 seconds. Munson's name on it. I'm sure he'll be grateful. Well, John, we don't have it. It's all the other thing. So, on the front of your prompt, you're going to write the words missing.
This is going to be a summary of what you couldn't find. So if they didn't have two pieces of evidence, guess what you're going to write there? Hello? You're missing two pieces of evidence in every single paragraph, okay? If they didn't have a synthesis on a paragraph, you're going to say you're missing a synthesis in paragraph three, okay? So you're going to write what they missed in their essay. So go through and look through it again. Make sure you're being fair and figure out what they're missing and what they're not. Yes? No, contextualization is one. Synthesis is at the bottom of every paragraph. Synthesis connects to bigger. Yeah, paragraph one, it goes to, yeah, see? Synthesis connects to southern, connects to something bigger than the future. Restate evidence synthesis. Restate evidence synthesis. Restate evidence synthesis. So, I guess we're writing down on that sheet, missing some synthesis here. Yeah? Cool, write it down. This is why we're doing it. So we're catching the errors now, so you're not writing the wrong thing over and over again this weekend, correct? Hello? Because if we don't correct it now, this weekend you're going to write two more essays in the wrong format, and guess what's going to happen? We're not going to be able to get you out of that damn formatting error, are we? So we got to catch it now. There needs to go. Restate the prompt. State it. Evidence. Provide two. Synthesis. In every single paragraph, you're providing your evidence, you're restating your prompt, you're explaining, of course, what it is. That's natural. Okay. So, now that you've listed everything they're missing, you are going to write two positives, one negative, but constructive. Who can raise your hand and tell me what constructive means? What does constructive mean, guys? It's not a trick question. Ryan. Yeah, you're not just being mean. There's a reason why you're telling. I assume Gunner's handwriting was terrible in his essay unless he really put the effort in. Was it terrible? It was terrible. So then, you should be writing, your handwriting is horrific. Okay, that's not actually constructive. Your handwriting needs work. I'm assuming whoever's reading Daniel's is also going to be making the comment, your handwriting needs a lot of work. Right? So I would start writing that down. I wouldn't be that proud about it because you're not going to get a 5. You're going to get a 4 or a 3 because your handwriting is bad. Because it's worth 60% of the exam. Yeah? I wouldn't be that proud. Daniel, you can't have crappy handwriting because your exam, your essays are 60% of your exam. Correct? They can't read it. They can't score it. So instead of getting a 5 or a 4, you're going to get a 3 or a 2. That's why handwriting matters. My handwriting is atrocious, but I'm writing for a grade or writing for my APs. Guess what's clean? My handwriting. Because I can when I need it. So, go through, write two positives, like, hey, your thesis was perfect, okay? One constructive thing, like, Callie, you need to tell your person that your contextualization cannot be ahead of your actual thesis. It's confusing. That's not how AP wants it. However, in English, they do want it that way, don't they? Hello? Yeah, they want you to talk broad and then narrow it down. We're not in English. You have to section off in your brain different essay structures, yes? The good thing is, ladies and gentlemen, is that once you learn all my essays in my class, it pushes the same essays. Same format, literally, exact same format. Guess what? Same exact essay, same exact essay format in AP Euro. Once you learn it, you learn it. You don't have to learn it, anything else. That's it, and I can tell you right now, they ain't going through the essays like this. So you have kids who are not taking AP World this year and like, oh my god, AP World's awful. I'm not taking it, but I'm going to take a push next year. Yeah? You know those kids? They're going to get rocked on the essays. Because Masano ain't sitting here teaching essays. Nope. He wants them knowing how to do it. And if you don't know it, especially that DBQ, you're going to get rocked. And they are. For sure. All right. Give it back to the person who owns it. Have a quick conversation with them and explain what you wrote. Remember, we're being positive but clear. Positive but clear.
Ladies and gentlemen, take out your cell phone, take a photo of your cover page. So when you're writing my essays this weekend, you know what you messed up yesterday, correct? Because you got to figure out the formats. If we're putting contextualization in the wrong place, if we're not doing synthesis, if we're not providing evidence, guess what we're going to keep doing until we get it perfect? Right. Guess what we really don't want to keep doing, in you and me? Right. So, take a picture of it so you know exactly what you did wrong. This weekend, you should be referencing your work. Can we agree? Look at old essays. Make sure you're doing what we need to. Every time we have a writing week, we are trying to pull it a little tighter. We're trying to clarify some things, add some new information. Because first writing week is just overwhelming, correct? This one is overwhelming because you're already writing a lot more, aren't you? Yes. Okay, but we're trying to make the changes to it, tightening up our essays, so the formats are there. Callie, pass your essays to uh, Caroline. Who has a stapler? Oh. Pass them up. Take out your short essays. Take out your short essays, like I said, guys. The faster we move, the better your life. Okay, I think we can agree that if I plan out your essays, it makes the writing of it significantly easier, correct? With that being said, I'm just going to really plan out your essays. If I can write them out, once I get through all three of planning, then I'll start writing them out for you. Is that fair? I think at the end of the day, if I just plan out all your essays, you're in a better spot, yes? Okay, so that's what I'm going to plan on doing. Okay, so... Last night you did question one. Today we're looking at two. Everyone should have this out. Whatever I do not finish for homework, uh, whatever I do not finish in class is homework. And remember, you have two essay prompts, your cause and effect using examples. And then, of course, you have your on your first page using specific examples and similarities and differences. Everyone's clear on the expectations. All right, let's cross some things off for you. So, answer all parts of the question that follows. Identify and explain three ways in which rulers legitimize or consolidated. Who can raise their hands and tell me what's legitimized mean? Gunner. It's like justify their rule. Justify their rule, okay? I am your teacher. If I wanted to legitimize my role, okay, Hillsborough County says I'm your teacher. Miss Hellenberg put you in my class. I have three degrees in education, one in history and all this other stuff that says I am qualified to be your teacher, yes? That's legitimizing my position as an authority figure here at Plant High School, correct? I have a 90% pass rate in AP World. That legitimizes my power, correct? My legitimacy over you. Consolidated. Who can tell me what consolidated means? Raina. Ah, be careful. What does consolidated mean? Who can help her out? What is consolidated? Jamal. Confirm. Confirm, kind of. But then why wouldn't it just be legitimized? Consolidate is a little bit different, and that's important. If you don't understand the language of the question, can you answer the question correctly? So when you get a prompt, you have to actually sit there and hash it out. What the hell are they asking me? Because if you can't answer the question, there's no way you can score the points. And this prompt comes up all the damn time. Tristan. Kind of like what the hell does that mean? Like, I know Jamal was kind of saying that. Like, I don't understand what that means. Like, to make it like one. To, to make it like one? Okay. So, consolidate is when you take over territory and you eliminate other people. So, if I wanted to consolidate my power as an AP World teacher here at school, who would I get kick off? Cardoza. Why would I kick off Cardoza? She's my opponent. She's my rival, even though she's like the sweetest little thing. 
Okay, so she's my rival. So if I wanted to consolidate my power in the AP world here at Plant High School, she'd be the first one I knock off, correct? Then I literally have all the power here at Plant High School. So legitimizing, I'm justifying my rule. God anointed me. I'm doing this. I have this power. I have this. Consolidate is the actual physical actions of eliminating people against you. Is everyone clear on that? Okay, so... Identify and explain three ways in which rulers legitimize or consolidated their power during the period of 600 to 1450. Use specific examples from one or more states. So you can't just focus on one group. So who are we looking for? What are we looking for here? What is the information we're going to be providing? What? Get months in. Yes, it's people's names. And then what they're doing to legitimize or consolidate their power. So, give me a ruler. How do they consolidate? Remember, the faster we go, the more I get done, the less you have tonight uh, for homework. Cade. Hongwu uh, conquered Mongols. Then, eliminates... Good one. That's a great one. Eliminates uh, Mongol influence in China. And, okay, so what's your evidence going to be? What's your evidence? Anisha. Okay, give me a specific example and it's perfect. Ah. Consolidating power. So this is really going to be about political power, correct? So what is a political thing he reinstates? Think about it. Something we've been talking about since pe uh, period one. Mela. Okay, yeah. It's, uh, what is that whole thing all about? Bronson. Well, I was trying to say the Yongle. No, because that's Yongle. <laughs> or in Hongwu. Guys, how about reinstates the what? What, Patrick? Mandate of heaven. Mandate of heaven, yes. Reinstates. Reinstates. Sorry, I couldn't figure out how to spell it. <laughs> Reinstates dynastic system, correct? Hello? Which is used by, supported by the mandate of heaven. Absolutely. Look how beautiful that answer is. It's perfect. All right. Who else? Give me another one. You need uh, three. What do you got? Uh, Gunner. Huh? Okay, um, you're going to have to really legitimize and consolidate power. How are you going to argue it? Declared holy war against Muslims in Jerusalem. Parentheses, Crusades. Okay, what's going to be your evidence of legitimacy? Uh, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that would work. That would work, actually. Uh, how do you spell it? D. God was it. Yeah, that would work. That would work. Um, you'd have to really focus on the fact that he's a pope. And you talk about the authority to speak on God's behalf. So you can get really tricky on this. If using God wills it is a, probably the only way you could actually legitimize it. Does that make sense? Hello? It's probably the only way, which is why I'm hesitant to put him on there, but that it works. Absolutely. All right, we need a third. What do you got? Reina. Genghis Khan. Yes. What about him? Okay, but that's not telling me how he's legitimizing or consolidating his power, though. Yes! Single largest man-made empire. Empire, okay. So, you're going to say what? Uh...
to rule Yan China. Why am I going to say specifically Yan China, ladies and gentlemen? It's evidence. Absolutely. It's evidence I know what I'm talking about. To Yan China. To uh, control government and run it more effectively. There you go, guys. You could also go it a different way uh, on this prompt. If you wanted to go religious controls, you could argue it that way. You could argue military power, argue it that way. You could argue, um, uh, I don't know, uh, rehauls over government. You could have done it that way, too. Okay. What did you say? Uh, took Persian government officials to rule on China. All right, so all you have to essentially do is just put that all together and write it up. Is everyone clear on that? That's the expectation. When you see me in the media center, friendly reminder, we're meeting in the media center on Monday, I am expecting that these to be fully written out. Yes? Okay. And remember, you need to identify everything as question two, part A, B, C, correct? Everything's labeled appropriately. What? Okay. Question number three, use the artwork below and your knowledge of world history to answer all parts of the question. This is the Japanese defeat of the Mongols. What do we know? What do we know, Patrick? Uh, that they, that uh, every single time the Mongols attack Japan, that, like, uh, monsoon like, wins. Swept the monsoon wins. Swept Mongols away. Okay, who is the major leader who is leading this? Who is it? Adi. Kublai Khan. Kublai Khan is doing it. Okay, and they try how many times? Try, try, try it twice. What do we? What do they call these divine winds, Jamal? Kamikaze. Kamikaze wins. There you go. So you thought you didn't know anything, and look how much you know. All right, identify and explain one factor that enabled Japan to defeat the Mongols in a military capacity alluded to in the painting. So what is the answer to A? Who can raise your hand and tell me? What allows Japan to beat the Mongols? What allows them, Abby? We've already covered it, darling. Yeah. What? If the monsoon wins, destroy Kublai Khan's invasion twice. Okay, that's it. Write it down in a nice sentence, and that's it. Identify and explain uh, one way in which the painting reflects the development of new cultural identities in the Mongols. So, what, uh, why is this a big deal and how is it going to affect their cultural ideals, Jing Hao? They what? Okay, so how is that going to change? Okay, they, yeah, they're definitely defeated. What are they going to stop trying to do after this? There you go. So leads to the con leads to the stopping <laughs> of expansion due to the loss. Major change in it's and like, you know, they're constantly pushing, pushing, pushing. It's a major change in what? Uh, it's a major change. What's the word I'm looking for, people? Like, they've been doing this for, like, uh, by the time they get to the Chinese invasions, they've been doing it for 50 years. And all of a sudden, they're like, ah. What do you got? Uh, there's no morality. They're Mongols. They have no morality. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm changing, uh, morale. Do you mean morale? Morale works. Morale works. I'll take that. Yeah, morality doesn't work, but they're Mongols. They don't have that. All right, C, identify and explain one way in which the Mongolian militarism affected international politics. Oh, my God. How has the Mongols' military affected international politics? 
Guys, pick a region and go with it. Oh my god. Is this what's going to stump us? You have a whole other question I haven't gotten to. Anisha! Okay, we'll explain how international politics have changed. Um, be careful. When you're talking about international politics, it's the interrelations between the Mongols and another community. So it's not a terrible answer. What's going to be your evidence? Exactly. That's the problem. Like, if you could state the law that bans it, that's evidence. Guys, come on, come on, come on. What would be... Uh, something we can prove. You still have a second whole, you have a fourth question here. It's the hardest one on the page, by the way. So, help me help you. Munson. Uh, be careful, because it is politics, not economics. I mean, if you want, yeah. So, international politics. Guys, what is one political thing the uh, Mongols do? We've already talked about one. Oh my god. Reina. Yeah, you can use them all day. Yes, you can. Absolutely. On your actual AP exam, the, all questions aren't going to be based on one period. Does that make sense? However, when I'm reteaching and going over a period I've already taught, you're going to see some similar answers that can come up because I'm practicing and focusing on one unit. Does that make sense? On your actual AP exam, they're going to have four short. You only have to choose three, and they're from one from every period. Does that make sense? I have to make these up in regard to the period I have. So, yes, absolutely you can share answers. So, the Persians, Persian bureaucrats, are being removed from the Middle East and moved to Yan, China to run the new bureaucracy because, and we can tie in your point here, right Anisha, because the Mongols don't respect the Chinese. There you go. Look at all that evidence we have. All right. All right. The only thing is, at least stopping of expansion to do uh, We need evidence for B. We've mentioned Kublai Kai. We've mentioned they have two invasions, which you wouldn't know by that. B needs some help leads to stopping of expansion due to the loss, major change in morale. What can we use as evidence? What other places are they going to lose after this? Gunner? Russia. Russia, they hold on to Russia for like ever. They're never giving it up until like this. <laughs> 1700s. What do you got? What are you going to cite for evidence? And that's the problem. We're trying to come up with evidence here. So we have to have specifics. Think about it. I'm thinking about it too. Um, identify and explain one way in which Japan reflects the development of new cultural identities to the Mongols. Um, they're kind of no longer untouchable, correct? So they're going to start making mistakes. Uh, they do lose. They stop challenging uh, Vietnam. What well, modern day Vietnam. They stop trying to get it. All right, there you go. That's your evidence. All right, four. Uh, use the two passages below in your knowledge of world history to answer all parts of the question that follow. Primary A, Pope Urban II. What do we know about him? Called for crusades. All right, let the holy spelter of our Lord and Savior, which is possessed by the unclean nations, especially arouse you. Unclean nations, who do you think he's referring to if he's the Pope? Muslims. 
Jer uh, this royal city, Jerusalem, situated at the center of the earth, is now held captive. Is that a positive term or a negative term? It's a negative term. By the enemies of Christ and is subjected by those who do not know God to worship of the heathen. <laughs> Who's the heathen? Amen. Accordingly, undertake this journey eagerly for the remission of your sins with the assurance of the reward of imperishable glory. <laughs> Sounds like it. This is exactly what Jesus would want, isn't it? Okay, so what is he saying? You fight, you get what? Fight equals a clean soul. There you go. Clean soul means no sins, which means you're going where, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. B. Saladin. Saladin. Who is he? Who is he? Malu. Recaptures Jerusalem. A response to a letter from Frederick the First of Barbosa. Who is he? Who is he? Who can raise your hand? Tell me. Callie. Was uh, stopped. By Pope. Do you think he's pissed off at the Pope? Do you think he's a sympathizer, maybe? We'll write sympathizer, and we'll put a little question mark. Because he might be a sympathizer. Why would he be a sympathizer? Because he's angry probably at who, too? The Pope. There you go. So, after he retakes Jerusalem after the First Crusade, whenever your armies are assembled... So this is Saladin writing to who? Frederick Barbosa. After Frederick Barbosa wrote a letter to him. Whenever your armies are assembled, we will meet you in the power of God. We will not be satisfied with the land on the seacoast, but we will cross over with God's good pleasure and take from you all of your lands in the strength of the Lord. So what is he threatening? Take over everything. Take over all lands. And when the Lord, by his power, shall have given us victory over you, nothing will remain for us but to freely take your lands by his power and with his good pleasure. By the virtue and power of God, we have taken... Can I keep going? Okay. By the virtue and power of God, we have taken possession of Jerusalem and its territories, and of the three cities that still remain in the hands of Christians... We shall occupy them also. What is he saying he's going to do? Cal, what's he saying he's going to do? Uh, take over Jerusalem. He's already taken it. Or, uh, he's going to take over Europe, man, right? Well, yeah, every Everything. Is this put him in a positive light or a negative light? <coughs> Negative. So if he's responding this harshly, then we're just going to take everything free with the grace of God. Do you think Frederick Barbosa is a sympathizer, or was he aggressive? Aggressive. So we can cross off sympathizer, because he ain't one of those. All right. Identify and explain one piece of historical evidence that would support Pope's Urban, uh, Pope Urban's interpretation about the conflict between Christians and Muslims. So what does Pope Urban think? Uh, what's Pope Urban's interpretation of the conflict? What is his interpretation, Zach? He says that Muslims are the enemy of Christ. Okay, Muslims are the enemy of Christ. So, that's a hard one to uh, provide historical evidence for. Um, <clears throat> guys, when you're asked to provide a piece of historical evidence that would support an interpretation, you have to look at the whole piece. So he says, let the Holy Spirit of our Lord and Savior, which is possessed by the unclean nations, especially arouse you. This royal city is situated in the center of the earth, is now held captive by the enemies of the Christ. What can you go on and talk about? What do you got? Yeah, you can talk about how they recap, how they take over the city. You can talk about the First Crusade, correct? Historical evidence. Uh, interpretation about the conflict, or you can ask, actually you should go, pre when they're asking for historical evidence to support, you have to go previously. When have Christians and Muslims fought? Tristan, when have we previously had Christians and Muslims fighting? Okay, we do have the Reconquista, but the Reconquista is actually happening after. Think about it before. When do we have our first Christian-Muslim conflict? 
Sarah. Battle of Tours. Uh, I want the Moors. Who's the guy fighting them? Charles Martel defeats the Moors. Defeats the Moors. Equals. Saves. Europe. Okay. He's considered a hero. Which equals his grandson becomes what? Becomes Holy Roman Emperor. Okay, so this is a war. Identify and explain one piece of historical evidence that would support Saladin's interpretation about the conflict between Christians and Muslims. So, okay, Saladin, he says he's going to conquer territory, and then he is going to advance. What can we use as evidence? What do you got? Okay, they've already conquered it once, but do you know who's the guy who's going to lead that conquest? I don't know either, so I can't use it as evidence, can we? What do we got? Where have Muslims taken over and conquered? That would be the step I take, ladies and gentlemen. Huh? The Middle East. Okay, so what are you going to use as evidence? Think about it. Adi? How are you going to use it? Cool, but how does that show that they're going to take over a territory? There is a place you could use Mecca for, but you're not giving any evidence. Jing Hao. Okay, we've already used it in one part. We don't want to use it again in the second. If you can give me the Muslim side of that argument, then yes. Okay, perfect. So what are you going to use as your evidence? He's not talking about the superiority of Muslims. What are you going to use as evidence? If you can give me the evidence, I'll accept it. You know who did it? Who can help him out? Who did it? Who, what group of Muslims are the ones conquering all the way up to Spain? Tristan. Yes! The Umad Caliphate. There you go. Caliphate. Conquered. North Africa. To Spain, <coughs> held on to it. For nine hundred plus years. Under Muslim influence. There you go. I would say that uh, definitely supports his point, don't you see? Do you see the difference between throwing down the Umahid uh caliphate and saying what you said? You're right, but you don't have the evidence to prove it, so it doesn't work. Bye, you got one more piece, then you got to write them out. You have two essays. You are meeting me in the Media Center. Have a great weekend, guys.